Hey guys, before we get into the episode here this week, I want to let you know about something we just launched over at SoyotronMedia.com. It's our very first Kickstarter. It's Steel City Startups. It's a magazine show we want to do. Go find out about it at SteelCitySTartups.com. Back it, tell your friends, and uh, stay tuned here at SoyotronMedia.com. Hey guys, it's Awesome Cast 108, where we talk about everything that went down at Google I.O., quite literally, with that crazy skydiving stuff. Maybe we'll have Chachi do that this episode. And also more of what not to do with your credit cards on the internet, like taking pictures of it and posting them public, you idiots. All that and more this episode with Frank the Fuzzwalk and Mad Mike in the studio. Awesome cast. Gentlemen, welcome to the Awesome Cast 108 live from the studio in Pittsburgh, PA. I'm your host, Michael Sorg, and new Kickstarter person. We'll talk about that a little bit later. With me on the couch is Mr. Chachi of Chachi Snow. Insert coin to begin.com. Two weeks in a row I did. What's my name? What's your name? What's my name? What's his name? Yeah. I have no idea what that was. <laughs> How you doing, Chach? You're playing. You're playing. You're, you're playing. You're doing your homework right now, aren't you? Well, I did my homework earlier, but I was revisiting that way I could accurately talk about it during the show. Which is uh, Happy Wheels. Which is for what show? Oh, Let's Play. Yes. Insert coin to begin presents. Let's play. Insert coin to begin dot com. Go check all that stuff out. All the previous episodes of new YouTube's going <laughs> oh, on there. Oh, 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 I just lost my head. Oh, uh, accurate. And also joining us on Skype is Frank Chinoweth. Hi. At Fuzzwad. He's an unemployed mechanic. He's an unemployed mechanical engineer. So somebody hire his ass. And I got a puppy yes. down here. I got a puppy. Whoop. I, you. I, I squeaked the puppy. I squeaked the puppy. Sorry. Stop it. How dare you squeak the puppy? Is the puppy an official guest? Uh, the, the puppy is not an official guest, oh, but he <laughs> wants to be. So there you go, guys, on video. This is Wicket. Says hello, he everybody. Si he single handedly brought down the Empire. There you go. There you go. Um, also with us over in the couch, you heard a little bit of him there. It is Mike Rorson of WrestlingMayhemShow.com, Crisis of Infamous, Mike's.wordpress.com. Holy crap, that's a. You mouthful. need a .com. Yeah, you know what? When I can regularly get content up there, I will buy the .com. There you Until go. Then, it's, it's a WordPress for now. Also a contributor to Dimension Wrestling Mayhem Show dot com. Wrestling Mayhem Every week. Com. Every week. TNA. TNA. He mm. watches it. He mm. talks about it. TNA. He does it so you don't have to. Yes. He's an engineer over at IBM, over at Big Blue up in up in New up, upstate New York, right? Uh well it depends on who you ask, but it's it's mid to upstate New York. Mid to mid it's to upper Albany. state. <laughs> it's below Albany. I don't consider anything north of Albany to be upstate. Yeah, I you know what? I, I'm not going to get into geography here, but because I, I mean, I'm under the understanding that everybody in New York City considers everything else upstate. Does that seem right? Um, not to someone who come who was born not in New York City. I okay. was I was born in Poughkeepsie, which is halfway between Albany and New York City, so I don't consider it upstate New York. There you go. There anything you go. north of Albany is upstate to me. So geography aside, this is yes. the awesome cast. Uh, Rob Digger Creta may be joining us. I'm not sure. He's out uh, fighting giant spiders in uh, downtown Pittsburgh. Uh, so good luck to him with that, uh, making things happen, making it safe for all of us spider haters uh, here in the studio. Um, so, uh, yeah, this is the awesome cast where we talk tech banter, news in the week, stuff that uh, that, that tickles our fancy. Uh, we're over at awesomecast.com. We're also contact at awesomecast.com if you want to uh, drop us a line on the email. Uh, you can also uh, uh, hit us up on the Twitters at awesomecast. We're on Facebook. We're on Google+. And uh, if I actually click the button, you guys can ha join me in the Hangout here during the show. And uh, if you're uh, in our circles already, and now that's up. So uh, go check that out. And, uh, and you know, we like to chime in and see, uh, you know, if we missed anything, your opinions on the uh, stuff, the news going on this week. And the big news coming uh, from last Wednesday on uh, was Google I.O., the big uh, developers conference for Google. Uh, so so thankfully, we got our Google fanboy in, in the house. Hi, Frank. Hi. <laughs> so, uh, I, well, well, I'll let you start. So, what was, uh, what do you think was the big thing that caught your uh, attention out of uh, Google I/O this year? 
Definitely uh, Jelly Bean. Jelly Bean? Yeah, between Jelly Bean and also the Nexus tablet, just because that's been a little long overdue for them. Mm-hmm. They needed. They should have made the Nexus tablet a while ago, so it's something I finally did. It was actually a lot of the stuff with Jelly Bean was stuff that they should have done before that they're just getting up to now. Um, one The big thing that was the big talk about Jelly Bean, it was the first thing they started talking about, was actually Project Butter. Um, it did not give you uh, Paula Dean as your navigation command voice. Um, <laughs> it was instead uh, just smoothing out the OS, just to make everything just run smoother. And they did a lot of uh, demos between... Um, I forget if it was them doing demos or if it were uh, some of the Android vlogs afterwards that showed a Galaxy Nexus, uh, one with ice cream sandwich, one with jelly bean, Android 4.0 and 4.1 respectively. Uh, showed them just loading apps, switching menus, doing all kinds of stuff. And it's just ridiculous how much better jelly bean handles all that stuff over ice cream sandwich. And there were there were a lot of people criticizing that on uh, the Twitters, which well, rightfully so. The yeah. fact that they went through this much Android before they got around to cleaning it up and making it smooth is just... It, it's a gross overlook, but... Mm-hmm. They're doing it now, so I guess it's working. It is. I, I know uh, AJ, uh, often contributor, uh, Time out. to o o o o. Um, how long did it take iPhone to get MMS uh, <laughs> multi touch? Um, oh, oh, notes. And, and I know I was able to the brag. stock response. Um, you go ahead, remove your stocks app without jailbreaking. <laughs> Let's see you do that. Yeah. What? <laughs> What? I All know right. I was able to brag for a <laughs> long time that I could send picture messages when my friends with iPhones couldn't. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, go with that. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I, I had to interject. That, yeah. That's my and response. You're right. And you're right. And, and you're right. Uh, it's, I mean, but that kind of goes, uh, that kind of shows uh, where the priorities lie between the two companies, too. Because right out, out of the gate, it was the prettier phone. It was the most startlingly different phone. There's a great article over on The Verge I was reading today uh, where it talks about five years later, that first iPhone is the groundbreaker that, that changed everything. And it's all been kind of iterative, you know, since with the iPhone. Uh, but but it, yeah, you're right. It, it shows the functionality wasn't, wasn't the first priority for them. They had the smoothness right out the gate. Uh, Google wants to make sure you can do all this stuff and it hasn't looked as pretty. So, so it's nice to see that again around to it because they do. We realize they do need to compete with that eventually. It's just they they have a different order of of different order of priorities there. So I got your priorities right here. Anyway, some of the um, some of the other notable updates to uh, Jelly Bean over Ice Cream Sandwich. Uh, the one that has my attention most, which it seems rather mundane, but thinking about it and. Since then, looking at my phone, whenever I use it, whenever I pull down a notification that I have an email or that someone sent me a picture or a text, with Jelly Bean, you're able to expand it and actually just handle um, any kind of like deleting the message or replying or anything like that. Uh, those just quick bits, you're able to do that right from the notification pull down. You don't need to exit to uh, the full app just to say you want to delete a message, mm-hmm. which I think that that's a brilliant thing to do with the notifications. That's um, probably going to be the thing that I'm looking forward to most out of Jelly Bean, aside from the butter. Um, but there was that. There was uh, higher res contact pictures, which is just one of those nice little improvements just to make things pretty. Um, just a real quick thing. I'm sick of everyone saying beautiful in the tech world. It's, it's so painfully overused. I cringe whenever I hear it. Oh, we can, we can thank Apple for that, too. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're they're the ones that wanted to use these uh, kind of buzzwords like it's it's fantastic, it's radically different, which I'm hearing in like commercials now uh, for everybody. It seems. Um, it, I mean, that's and really, it, it seemed like Google tried to. I don't want to say out Apple, Apple, but to out keynote everybody else. Yeah, because um, I don't remember Google I/O being so flashy. No, I, I, mean, it, I mean, aside from the big stunt, which we'll get into. Um, what I mean, the, just the, the the presentation was a little more like there's a lot of uh, it, yeah, a lot of times I watch the Twit coverage uh, and they do a little bit of talking over while watching the keynote, kind of like what we try to do here for uh, WWDC and uh, and E3. 
And uh, their big thing, like they they were watching things like the event calendar and uh, you know some stuff about Chrome, and and a lot of it was like, who are they talking to right now? Because this is a developer conference, and this isn't something for developers. So yeah. so, but again, WWDC again talking about some of that the you know little fancy things uh, you know in a uh, you know mountain line that's coming out this month isn't really for developers either. So this is. It's like they've rolled this press thing into their big developer thing. So they're killing two birds with one stone, I guess. I guess. <clears throat> so. Yeah. Um, what are your in- impressions? Tell- now, Google Now, this is the thing that's like the, I think they call it a, a semantic search, if I'm not mistaken, where, uh, did, did, did you look into the good Google Now much? Uh, Google Now, yeah. Yeah, that's that's the other big thing. Um, and, uh, the interesting thing that I found about that, uh, that's definitely something that I want for my phone because it's something that I legitimately use. But the interesting thing came out, uh, I, I believe it was Friday. I first saw it on, uh, Gizmodo. Um, there's a, uh, there was a test done from an outside agency, uh, not Gizmodo, just from some third party research company. Mm-hmm. They ran both Siri and now I'm not sure if it was the Siri beta that's currently available or if they actually got a developer preview for iOS 6 and used the full version of Siri. But uh, they ran Siri against Google Now in a 1600 question showdown where Google uh, had correct answers 86 percent of the time, whereas Siri only had 68 percent of the time. Uh, decent answers. I think is this the uh, Techno Buffalo video that's been yes. out there? Uh, yeah, that's yeah, the one. We, we I saw this on uh, on another show. They were showing off this video, and uh, and again, what were the percentages again? Uh, Eighty six to sixty eight. Okay, um, and and also I think that one thing, one good point that was brought up the the last time I, sh- I saw this one uh, was that it also depends on how you're asking the questions. Obviously, Siri will take certain types of questions versus how this one interprets them, I think. Uh, so, which, you know, you kind of have to adapt to it to a certain point. I understand these things are supposed to be as natural as possible, but we're so much closer, but not there yet, you know? Yeah, so. but one of the things um, one of the things that a lot of people were discussing about that in response to um, that review being posted is the fact that Siri is integrated so much with marketing rather than just pure data uh and they have some of their um uh what do you call uh responses uh that they actually wrote down uh from siri when did the movie cinderella come out Mm -hmm. and siri actually brought up movie search on yelp just to see which theaters were showing cinderella locally and then uh the next question was what spices are in lasagna and it responded with another yelp search uh looking for a for restaurants that had lasagna served there. And then the the really just far out there one, uh, it, the question was, I want to go to Lake Superior. And Siri responded with the directions to the company Lake Superior X-Ray, which was <laughs> just odd, I think. But um, that's just another thing that people are going to be fighting about now, which one's better. But yeah. I think that Google Now is very impressive, and especially the fact that they have um, they have the hands-free, where if you're in the car and you want to do something, you just say Google, and then it automatically brings up uh, your voice input to then ask the question. So I think that that's something that's really nice that they included with that. Nice. Nice. Yeah, it, it, and I, I'm really impressed with uh, some of the other stuff I saw. I think this is still encompassed in the Google Now service, where uh, it will do um, like they'll do the transit maps, like uh, you know the transit directions. Like I, I know I can do in the Google Maps on my iPhone right now. Uh, but through this, it'll say I want to be. I can say I want to be at a certain point at three o'clock. It'll tell you what train or bus or whatever that you would take to get there on time. Okay. So, yeah, Google Now is definitely going to be the big thing that a lot of people are talking about with uh, Jelly Bean, that, and Project Butter. Um, one of the really interesting things, though, there are a couple of uh, just small things that didn't seem like real big improvements, but I think are definitely going to uh, make the overall experience better with using an Android phone or tablet. Mm-hmm. One is the maps within the venues, which they showed off. 
which I think is an excellent thing because sometimes you look and you're like, oh, that's a nice restaurant. I want to go there. And you see it on the street. You're like, yeah, it has a nice, pretty facade. And then you get there and then it's just a total dump inside. And we've all had that happen. But now they have where you actually see inside the restaurant. You can look around just by pointing your phone or tablet and it'll adjust the compass within to show you exactly what you're looking at. Mm -hmm. I think that that's something really good. And then the other thing is multi-channel audio that I think is going to be a pretty big deal coming out of this. Uh, and I hadn't even thought about this before because I haven't used my phone for this yet, but whenever you plug your phone through HDMI into your TV, it sends in a mono-channel format. But now with Jelly Bean, it actually breaks it up into uh, multiple channels for you. Hmm. And I wonder if the iPhone does that too, because those we've had an HDMI uh, adapter for you know since last year when they released uh, I think the iPad too. So, I, but I never really looked to see if it broke it down or not. So, that's nice. Hey, well, yeah, speaking of audio, uh, the other thing, of course, there's Nexus Seven. Uh, what do you think of the Nexus Q? Um, the your, your, the bowling ball. Yeah, it's. I've been looking at it, and since I.O., I've been trying to justify getting one. Or not, well, not even justify getting one, but it, figure out why it costs as much as it does. Uh, someone did tear it apart, and it is essentially a Galaxy Nexus rolled into a ball. Same processor, same memory, um, all that good stuff. But for $300, I just can't see it, it's spending. like it's a three hundred dollars to be like like they're showing here in the diagram on the video, pretty much like a junction box for all your media. Yeah, like, like it, it it has to be controlled by by an Android phone or tablet yeah. over Wi Fi. Like it has to be. There's I don't think there's any other interface to this thing. And no, uh, I don't it, think so either. And they say and even you look at the back and it's got some pretty serious hookups for for speakers. That's for sure. Um, so it is, they kept saying, like, hook it up to your best TV and your best speakers in your home. They actually sell a set of uh, $400 speakers here uh, beside it, by the way. Uh, you know, special speaker cables for it, which are uh, kind of the, let me see these here. These are like the uh, higher end. Yeah, these are just like higher end speaker cables. Um, yeah. So, and then like the big feature like this says social streaming media player so basically you walk into a house you know usually you know we basically have... you walk into a house and hijack the playlist yes that was the thing that's what it is as, as soon as i saw that i sent the tweet out so this means when i'm listening to rap and techno my fiance can walk in and just throw kenny chesney to the top of the list exactly exactly um, there has to be some guards against that, like password protect your playlist or something like that. They're like, oh, this is great at parties because somebody can change it. No, that's a horrible idea. Yeah. That, that, that's, that's the way to be a dick, you know, yeah. it, it, it's asshole mode on, on, uh, on, on your party mode. Um, but, and, and here, and, but here's the funny thing about it. Hmm. Uh, so some, uh, some websites have gotten them and they've started testing them and apparently, uh, it, you can't leave a movie paused for like more than two minutes. Otherwise it just locks up everything. Oh, wow. Uh, they, in just setting it up, they had to force restart it multiple times just to get it to work. And it wasn't just that they had a faulty, uh, Nexus Q because they, uh, their testing format was a phone, a tablet, and two Nexus Qs that they alternated just to replicate errors between each other. So apparently, this thing's one of the buggiest things to ever come out. It's 1.0. It's it's 1.0. Yeah. You know, hardware that by Google, you know, and how much how much hardware does Google make, you know? Uh who do, actually manufactures this? I don't even know if they listed it cuz obviously Asus uh uh does the Nexus uh tablet and uh I think Samsung did the last iteration of their Nexus phone. Yes. So who is this from? I wonder. Um, I honestly haven't heard anywhere mm -hmm. who made this. Um, the one discussion, though, and this could be a justification for the price, is the fact that the Nexus Q is made entirely in the United States. Mm -hmm. So that could be one of the reasons why it costs so much. That's what a lot of places are speculating, but even still, that doesn't say exactly who makes it. Exactly, exactly. Um, and then uh, the thing... <laughs> Moving on here, uh, the big thing, uh, of course, there's some Google Plus announcements and stuff, and uh, I can't wait to get my update on 
to be able to use uh, it on iPads, for one thing. Um, and I think Android, Android already got the Google Plus update, right? Uh, yeah. Okay. I, I, yeah, with have with you been, the events and whatnot, you mean? Uh, no, just the general app update they were revamping. Uh, with the events, with new Hangout stuff, uh, new I think a new flow mode to it. Yeah, um, the, yeah, there was a huge overhaul that happened like the day after that I got. Mm, and it's coming soon for us on iOS, of course. So, so how how do you like that compared to the last version of it? Um, for the most part, I like it better. The the way they had um, where it was more of a black frame around the boxes mm -hmm. uh, whenever you were looking at someone's post in the stream, I kind of like that better because it seems like everything runs together now because there's almost no frame difference between like one post to the next. But other than that, I think that they've done an excellent job with just updating it just the way the app works i think is possibly the best functioning app on my phone it always it, seemed it, like it always seemed like what the previous app and of course i still got it here on, on the iphone um is that seemed like like it got me into google plus it was a really good look for google plus i enjoyed it but it still felt like i couldn't do everything that i could do on the desktop like it felt like i was really hampered on this thing um and granted, I could do hangouts and stuff, but then I couldn't do like on airs are, st are still uh, you can't do them with these. Yeah, it's gonna, yeah, it's it, gonna, it's like, gonna come up every if, time. If they start building it out and give it more capabilities than what it has now, then I think that that could be an excellent thing. But just for what it does now, mm -hmm. for how buggy it is, and for how much it costs, it it's almost it's almost like just a developer toy more than something commercial. It is, and maybe this is their their Apple TV like uh, hobby right now. You know. Yeah. So, um, so something that is becoming a less, I don't know, this is a really uh, neat hobby. They, they, this is the first, I think, uh, I don't know if, do, do we call it a product demo? The, uh, the uh, Google skydiving thing. Um, so, they had Google Glass, uh, there, there was, they were talking about Google Plus events. Uh, and the poor guy got run off by uh, Sergey Brin, who came out like, in a kind of stony Tony Stark moment, they kept saying, um, here, let me, let me pull up the video here. Uh, so here he is, uh, with Google glasses on is apparently they're attached to his face. Cause he's in, that's in every picture that anybody's seen him with, uh, lately. Um, and they go to a Zeppelin, atop the high above the, uh, Moscone center there in San Francisco, where they have skydivers prepared to jump wearing Google glass, and they do it in a hangout. Coolest hangout ever, right? Um, yeah. Except for, except for the guy with an amplifying um, uh, satellite dish, who was just standing on the roof of the building, aiming it at the people as they were falling. I mean, obviously, I mean, yeah. You don't expect Wi-Fi to work for something like this. This is definitely a, an outside the box case here. Uh, See, I I thought that 4G that they would have been able to do that over mobile network. I didn't think that they'd need the extra person like they did. Mhm. Mm Cuz I I'm not entirely sure exactly how everything connects between Google Glass and whatever else it connects to if it connects to a phone or if it's its own independent thing. But I would have thought that the Google Glass would have been an extension of the phone, similar to like a Bluetooth headset, and that that's how they would have done it. And I don't think it's been disclosed that that's exactly what's going on. But obviously, these things are Wi-Fi. There's not like cellular stuff inside the the, the glasses. Um, so I mean, you see, they have a bunch of packs uh, strapped to them, um, and and I mean, they're, 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 this is early prototype stuff, so it's not you know they don't. I don't think they have all the functionality built into the glasses themselves by themselves. Um, so here they are getting ready to see over and, and this, this just popped out of nowhere. We're like, okay, we're just watching whatever. And that, that is a pretty surreal look right there out the, out the, uh, door. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and you see, it's a hangout just like we enjoy, like, you know, every Monday night watching raw, uh, you know, most of us, most of us on raw. Um, and let's see, it get to the point where they actually jump here for you guys on video. Oh, there you go. And now there's uh, four different perspectives of people jumping in squirrel suits over San Francisco. That's pretty cool.
Yep, because yeah. that's that's why they cost so much. Well, that and that's not why they cost so much. Um, the, 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 the well, we'll get to that in a second. Uh, so they do this. They land on the roof. They get on uh, BMXs or or hand them off or whatever. And there they are on the roof there landing and uh, jump, jump, I think, like from building to building and rappel down the side and end up on the stage. Naturally. 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 Handing off one of the Google glasses to Sergei, Sergei who just kind of ignores it, actually. So, um, yeah. Who's going to beat that, Apple? <laughs> I guess. And after that, they announced, yes, uh, Google Glass will be for sale uh, to developers there at Google I.O., of course, $1,500. They admitted it probably isn't going to work very well because this is an early thing. It's kind of an, like an early uh, production one run they're going to be doing here. And uh, I don't know, but it's, it's it's more of a reality here. And, and they even uh, had some people get to uh, uh, put them on and they had some kind of fireworks display going on. Um, but I don't know, that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. I don't know, it's making you more excited? Uh, and, and maybe it's created a new sport in Google Glass uh, Extreme Hangouts. Yeah. Because, I mean... Yeah, that, that would be pretty interesting. And, like, there's a lot of... Uh, there's a lot of potential with those. Like, when you think about it, you know, give everyone who's performing in the X Games or the Olympics a set of those. And that'd be crazy. Just, you know, just to get someone who's in the middle of the pack during the one-mile run just be able to check in to see what they're seeing. That's cool. Or pace cards. Uh, one aspect. of the other things that I'm sure everyone was expecting this, and it came out, like, uh, I believe on Thursday, uh, as expected, uh, porn industries are looking into uh, <laughs> the Google Glass for POV-style porn. So, Of course. Of course. Yes. Because it was so awkward yes. for them to do it the way it had before with the whole Woo! camera, you know? Right, Josh? He's ready. It was. He'll review that. What were you so, saying over there, Mike? So awkward. I was saying it could be. It could also be fun for uh, NASCAR. NASCAR? Make windshields out of Google Glass. Well, I don't get, think that's... Get, well, uh, you know, you could put like a little... Just some sort of insert into it. Yeah, but the, they already have cameras, though. I don't think that's... Th this is more for like the places where you can't just stick a camera. You know, yeah, where it is, this is going beyond the, the GoPro. Yeah, whereas, I mean, you know, granted, you could do skydiving with like one of those GoPros or something, but now instead of having that thing dangling on top of your head, you're literally just putting on a pair of glasses and you're good to go. It, it makes it a little more accessible that you don't have to worry about. Uh, you say it is something like um, like the BMX stuff or, or like if you're skiing or something like that, something where that extra maybe weight to your head might not be a good thing for your balance. Now, you just have something on your face and you're good to go. You know, maybe it does take a little extra hard work. I think I think everybody's pretty much expecting this thing's going to tether to your Android phone in your pocket. And that's where the real processing is going to happen. I don't think anybody's going to be surprised and maybe even not even disappointed if that's the way it's going to be. But um, that's yeah. the only thing yeah, that'll that will keep me on. Well, the that's exactly what I'm expecting with it. Yeah. Yeah. Will you say that's the only thing I'll keep you on Android, Josh? At this rate? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> He's, he's he's looking over there. That makes me interested in it. Holy holy hell! I mean, even the Nexus Seven is something that I'm considering. If I needed a, a seven inch tablet, which why the hell would I need one at this point? Um, but uh, that it's really looking like a, a decent choice. It's definitely looking like a better choice than the Kindle Fire at this point. For like guys like this, they're a little more tinkerers, of course, and it doesn't have all the crap that everybody else does to it. Like I'd hate to have a Zoom. We we played with the Zoom here in the studio. Like that was that was horrible. So anything else out of uh, Google? Of course, you know improvements to Google Plus, the events, uh, which uh, kind of interesting party mode. I like to play with that a little bit. Did you talk about the up. skydiving? We just talked about the skydiving. Where have you been? Are you still playing your happy <laughs> he wheels? Was looking at the no, geeks. <laughs> there is one other thing from uh, I/O that I thought was really interesting with Google, um, with, or with uh, Android. The fact that they released the uh, the PDK and like a fool, I put down the uh, abbreviation and I can't I can't remember. Uh, oh no, peripheral development kit is that what it is for for Android things like just anything that you would have that would work with your Android phone. That um, that now there's a just a specific development kit 
specifically for that to make uh, better accessories. Interesting. That was so so kind of like how with the iPhone we have like uh, docks for speakers and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, like okay. on those lines, but it's uh, geared specifically to give you full access to everything that the Android system would have to offer an accessory like that, like a game control or okay. like so, um, so kind like of some kind of. The Nexus One or the Nexus Q, I'm sorry, is sort of like the precursor to that, right? Like that's the hey, look at what we can do. I mean, I can't see this. Uh, they them expecting this to go crazy. They're like, this is our example of what this can do. Just like the Nexus Phone and now the Nexus Tablet are, are like, hey, stop messing it up. This is what we think you should guys you guys should be designing off of as an example. Yeah. So now this is out there for people to do other stuff. The Q is that first example. And some people will sell it. The early adopters, the tinkers are going to grab that thing. And who, what developer, you know, goes out there and, and, and makes it better. Hopefully. Mm -hmm. Word. So um, that's interesting. That's interesting. And definitely they needed something like that. And hopefully it works across everything, you know, uh, yeah. as has been a problem with Android, of course. Uh, I'm excited for Android, oddly enough. Like, for new Android. Like, I would love to get my hands on a Nexus tablet. Uh, you know, if I needed an Android phone, the, the Nexus phones are always, you know, that clean experience. Like, you know, that you don't have to worry about all that crap. Uh, like, you Yeah, and quite phones. honestly, quite honestly, using um, my Samsung Galaxy Nexus as compared to my fiance's uh, Motorola Razor Max, mm -hmm. it's, it's just not even a comparison, in it's, my opinion. Yeah, it's a whole how, different experience. How good just the... It, it's clean and lightweight and it's just so much nicer to use because even though that, well, she just got her ice cream sandwich update uh, like two or three days ago, but even still using it, you can still feel that there's a little bit of weight from just added unnecessary crap from uh, Motorola. Mm -hmm. And it's the same feeling you get when you pick up a windows PC from like HP or Dell or something like that. And it has all that crap on there. You know, it's uh, it, it just kills the experience and yeah, and you know, I'm waiting for that day where you're like, you know, why do I have a virus thing that keeps bugging me on my phone, you know, later down the line? Uh, it, it's leading to that. It seems like it more and more, you know. Um, and that's why you have, like, was it six months later? I mean, we're on the new version with Jelly Bean, and the previous version is still on, what, 7% of Android phones? Oh, yeah, I it, mean, it's something ridiculous. So, but I know with the move of all the, uh, all the Razors, that's going to definitely um, balance things out in mm -hmm. that area. Exactly, exactly. Wheels is in the chat room. He says he loves his Android phone and tablet. He just wants to throw that out there. And he's been using it. I know he's been using it for Hangouts and stuff on Mondays. So, you know, and he uses he it a bit at, uh, at the wrestling shows, I know. Um, so, good stuff, good stuff. All right, away from Google. Although it's nice because we were usually talking Apple all the time. I know. Um, I was enjoying and it. on to Microsoft. On to Microsoft. <laughs> Wait, yeah. What, what do I have for Mike? What's going on with Microsoft? Windows 8. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. I was I was kind of geeking out about this the other day. <laughs> I couldn't believe that when I saw that. $40 for the upgrade all the way back to Windows XP. Which is exactly what most of the computers that I have to support for my family are, which is fantastic. It's beautiful. It's a you guys Shit, remember I when I one. had all these computers Man, behind me that are now just beside time. me. Every every computer that's not a Mac in here has a legit version of XP that can now be easily upgraded. And that is uh, to clarify that is I believe the forty dollars is the online upgrade option. Um, yes, they don't seventy for a disc. Seventy for a disc if you want to go to a store. Forget it. Why would you even bother at this point? Unless you live out in sticks like my dad does. Um, because you frame them all. Because you're a collector. <laughs> exactly exactly seriously my brother gave, my brother gave me an oem copy of vista uh when he moved out a couple months ago i don't know what to do with it coaster it's a uh, pretty, coaster pretty much right because it, it's like a, do you have a collection of those old aol discs it might go well with that i actually Clear. i actually finally threw all those discs out i had a stack oh. this big of aol discs. so what i used to do is i take the aol discs and i kind of you remember this chachi i would take sticky tack and kind of like put them on the ceiling and yep. stuff although <laughs> you know, he did that a lot yeah although girlfriends didn't like when they just kind of fell on you in the middle of the night yes you know because the sticky tack would go well yeah, of course so, yeah you know um but other than that um <laughs> So, uh, so yeah, $40, I mean, that's closer. It's not the $20 we're going to be paying for Mountain Lion. 
uh, this month. And I don't know if it's going to yeah, be. Yeah, but it's an improvement for Microsoft. It is. It's a huge improvement. And, and that's for Pro, right? The Pro I'm not sure. Uh, I didn't see exactly which version, but actually, yeah, I think it is for Pro. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think it is for Pro. Now that you say that, I'm pretty sure that that's what it's for. So, I mean, th- then they had to do this. They had to do this to get all of us off of Windows XP. They're still on it. Um, yeah. And, and that's why they're doing it, to get people off of XP. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Just because they know that that's a huge issue for them. Well, they want to stop supporting it, because now the, this, this is a fourth version they're going to have to support. Um, so, uh, other than me having slow, slow, slow computers uh, that won't run Windows 8, probably. Um, well, but then again, God, these things got to... Do them if they're if they're uh, going to be running Windows 8 on tablet stuff and at, and uh and, and smaller processors, I, it, it's got to be pretty, you know, have a pretty slim version to it. But we'll see. Hey, we'll see if it has the. I'm sure it's like per computer you upgrade. It's not like uh, Apple where I drop my twenty dollars and I can upgrade the four Macs that are in front of me right now. You know, like like nothing. Um, so uh, we'll see. But that's that's a great first step for them, and uh, and glad to see they're they're doing something um here you say wheels he's running uh eight on his laptop and seven on his desktop now so of course you can get the preview preview versions uh pretty easily if you uh want to reformat your stuff and don't have a lot of stuff that needs to keep working so but more of us are working online so that kind of kills it uh so uh do you guys notice friday when half of the internet went down yep Mm -hmm. so this is what happens when you do all you guys Developing stuff out there depend on one service in Northern Virginia. <laughs> that has a thunderstorm. <laughs> Are you laughing because you're an IT guy, or uh, no? I was laughing because the entire internet went down because everyone's based out of the same freaking area. Yeah, yeah. So, so drop a nuclear bomb on uh, Northern Virginia, and uh, you've just wiped out half of the services that we enjoy, into including Instagram, Netflix. Uh, apparently, if you were watching a video, it didn't affect you because it wasn't that part, but it was the part that searches for movies. Um, and what what else? There was there's a there's a whole list of other ones. What else got got hit? Did you, did you guys hear about? Didn't Pinterest go down? Pinterest Pinterest went down. Yeah. Uh, Tumblr. I yeah, I thought Tumblr went down. Tumblr. Too. Yeah. So you had no place to post your pictures of food that you were eating at the time that you took in <laughs> Se- in Sepia. It's a shame. Because Steph, I, was, yeah, sorry. I was eating something delicious on Friday. I'm sure you were. I'm sure you were. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, first, first, you know, this is disclosing that uh, Amazon hasn't distributed their. Uh, well, you know what? But isn't it? Is because we had this issue with Amazon before, where something went down, and they said that it was uh, the people developing on these platforms not adequately taking advantage and advantage of the platforms and the multi-site options that they did have. And therefore, one site went down again. These were thunderstorms that hit Friday night, apparently. Um, that were they were pretty crazy here in Pittsburgh, I know. Um, so, I, I think that's the modern equivalent of what happened in Live Free or Die Hard. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. It's a fire sale. Every social media site goes down all at once. Twitter and Facebook were up. There Riz, you go. Riz says Twitter was down. I had used to Twitter all night long. Well, Riz says Riz says he didn't know the internet was down because the internet was down. That's true. <laughs> so there you go. Yeah, you don't know. It could be just your your phone. You know, um, Twitter wasn't down. But interesting night there. At least it wasn't Gmail because people have been pulling their hair out. You you lose Gmail for like ten minutes. At and least it, it wasn't goes. the PlayStation Network. I can prove Twitter wasn't down. Why? That's the that was the night of the Sandusky verdict. Yeah, I was on Twitter. I know damn well it was it was off Friday up. night. Yeah. No, that Sandusky was two weeks ago. No, it wasn't. Mm-hmm. No, I, because I got I was not in Pits- I was not in Pittsburgh when the Sandusky verdict was. I feel like I was earlier somewhere. last week. It was. It was Damn during it. Bill Maher's show last week. Anyways, um, so uh, well, it still wasn't down because I was on it because softball ended early. Yeah, yeah, and I was on Netflix. Yeah, because I had nothing else to do. Um, Frank, I think you sent this one. Do a barrel roll. Hi. <laughs> Do a barrel roll. Oh. Try a somersault. Frank is not there. <laughs> because his scout oh. went down. Use the boost to chase. <laughs> Apparently he's still on the phone though, so we'll get him back up here. Because uh, I can hear him on the phone that we set up so he can receive 
uh, audio from us and sent one down too. Um, so let's go to a different story while we try to get him up. The person whom you're trying oh, to no. Oh, is no. Oh, no. Oh, sexy no. British lady. The person we are trying to reach is not available. We just said that he, he got dropped because he didn't do a barrel roll. Oh, I got you. I got you. Uh, so this is an interesting site uh, going on here where uh, it, it, it's uh, at need a debit card on Twitter where they are tweeting or retweeting people that post pictures of their credit cards. You know, natural selection should really sort these people out. Yeah, um, you would think, right? Here's my question. <laughs> now, they're dumb enough to post a picture of it online. Mm-hmm. Uh, does that mean it, I'll still get in trouble if I if I use their credit card? <laughs> I think that's still fraud if you use that number, you know. But well, they uh, gave it to me. They gave it to everybody. Exactly. So uh, again, you don't know if it's there. What what if what I, I, I I I just print out the tweet or picture of it from the internet? You're gonna hand them a printout with with, with, with a, a timestamp, and when I go to prison. <laughs> My lawyer can show that to the judge and be like, oh, well, I found it online. Well, these they are, gave it to me. A lot of these are Instagrams. It looks like they're cracking down on, on this site, at least, because a lot of the pictures that are uh, on here are won by Instagram. So people are Instagramming their credit cards. And, and this is like... Um, oh, I know what they're doing. What? Are, what? They're backing up their credit cards. Oh, to a public. They're, they're, oh. they're backing like they're they're getting copies of their numbers. That way, if they forget a card at home and they want to order something online, they have a picture of the number oh, and everything that they need. Uh huh. But they're <laughs> failing to realize that this is an online service. This is a public <laughs> online service. And the photos have been taken down, but like some of the stuff that gets retweeted. Accidentally bet my debit card, so I ripped it, getting a new one in a week. Um, retweeted a photo that somebody took of her debit card in another tweet. She posted most of her address. <laughs> oh, no. Well, that's fantastic. So this is just them showing off how stupid people are on... <laughs> They deserve everything that happens. There, there's some stuff. There's oh, there's a picture of an ATM. Uh, oh, it looks like they're they're uh, uh, probably they're doing a bot for anybody that mentions a debit card. So uh, it's it's probably stuff that is a card. Probably usually stuff that is a card. Um, there's a Hello Kitty card. Um, I want a Hello Kitty credit is card. That, is that Kate Dutters? Is it Kate Dutters? <laughs> Because we should tell her that that's a public place. <laughs> hey, hey, you, you, that, you should know better. You've been a podcast, <laughs> right? Um, but don't tweet your poop and don't tweet your credit card. Don't tweet your credit card exactly. <laughs> so it's uh, a new rule, social media. <laughs> exactly. So I mean, yeah, it's the Darwinism of the internet. It, it's it's just kind of showing off people. Okay, barrel roll. Let's try this again, Frank. Don't go away. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. I think I know what's wrong. Okay. And it sucks because this computer is only like six months old and I have to take it in for service already. Ah. Anyway. Yeah. I, you know, anytime you see don't, don't, or anytime you see do a barrel roll on Twitter, yeah, you get yeah. excited. Yeah. You know, that's just, that's just natural. Do and in fact, I saw a poster from Droid Life and then I click and I see this video. And whenever you open, um, when you go into Google now and you say do a barrel roll, it spins the screen around doing a barrel roll and brings up. YouTube results for the video of Peppy saying do a barrel roll. Best thing ever. It's better it's better than their little hidden gem jelly bean thing that they have built into uh the menus. Well Google, oh, look at that. Google has all sorts of fun stuff like that. Yeah, I do well doesn't the site the like doesn't Google like the Google dot com when you search something like that do something? Yeah. yeah. Like in I, certain browsers? Yeah, like also if you search uh the word anagram, I think it comes back with did you mean nag a ram? Yeah, and uh, if you, uh, there's tilt, where it'll just tilt the screen. Mm -hmm. um, there's, I, I believe there's snow. Wasn't there one site where you could actually put the Konami code in? Uh, there's a whole list. I believe it's Konami code. Hold on, let me verify this. Uh, there's actually a database full of sites that you can put the Konami code there's into. Your anagram, <laughs> of course. Uh, that's not it. You said tilt is one? I believe so. It tilts the screen. Oh, helps if I spell it right. There it goes. Oops. 
There you go, it's tilted. Hey, is it do a is do a barrel roll on here too? Yeah. Yeah, it should be. Do a barrel roll, let it load. Uh, it yeah, as soon as I heard about the dual barrel roll, then I try then I typed in try a somersault, but nothing happened. That's was, a shame. If you go to uh, Konami Code Sites dot com, uh, and you are bright enough to remember the Konami Code because you need it to access the website, they will give you uh, the entire list of websites across the net that have a, a, a an Easter egg. Based on the Konami code. Nice. That's pretty. That's a lot of websites. Yeah. What was the site again? Konami code sites.com. There you go. Go check that out. Oh, wow. You can do it on Google Reader? <laughs> 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 Trying that one. All right. Um. <laughs> that's awesome. It turned my thing into a ninja. <laughs> there are ninjas. There are ninjas. <laughs> Awesome. Sorry. No <laughs> problem. No problem. No problem. All right. Anything else we missed this week, guys? Go back to that site. Uh, any other news from this week, guys, that um, uh, we should bring up that you guys have been hearing about? No, next week, but uh, uh, not this week. Next week, if there's enough information, I will talk about a new console gaming system. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh, yeah? That's Ooh. for real? That's for real. Um. So, Ooh. actually, I had one more that I nope. wanted to mention. That I forgot to put. I wanted to find a source to put it in here. Um, did you guys hear about Steam Films? Yeah. So apparently, Steam or Source, I guess Source Films actually. Um, Valve is received. Re source is of course the engine they use in Half Life, Team Fortress. And of course, there's a big the Team Fortress Adult Swim thing that just happened uh, with the Meet the Pyro videos and everything like that. Um, and still trying to find there you go it was source filmmaker is what they're calling it um so they're opening this up as a pretty quick and easy way to make films using source the source engine uh you know it's kind of like the unreal engine like we see in, in in a lot of games these days um apparently they're letting this out for free which you know they've done that before with their their uh tools usually uh for source and uh, it, it's like developing a game, but you get a movie out of it. So, hmm. I don't know. Is this well, one, one, one show I was watching said, okay, you know, we're going to have a lot of machinima now. Uh, but I think people can use these tools to be a little more creative with that. If, if a lot of the work is there for you. And I, and I don't know. I'd love to hear what uh, Malengo has to say about this because he is uh, the one person I know that does 3D animation. So uh, I don't know. What do you guys think about this? You think this will uh, uh, have some pretty creative uh, projects come out of it? Chachi? I'm sorry, what? I was distracted by Konami codes. I'm not lying. Frank, what do you think? <laughs> um, I was sorry. distracted by Chachi being distracted. All right, excellent. Mike, what do you think? Um, I mean, it seems like that there would be some ways to make it interesting. I mean, I'm not really that all that familiar with 3D animation and stuff like that. But mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, the I mean, the internet is a magical place. As as long as there's a new form of media to try and get new content out there, people are going to try and you know make make something of it, regardless of how short or long it lasts on the internet. Like, it's just a any new any new ways to make content just to get pe get it out to people is a good thing. And people are going to attack this. I mean, just I mean, there, how many people are already working in source to to make uh, games? I mean, Team Fortress was something that was made. Actually, I think it was actually made on the uh, Quake engine, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I mean, especially how easy it is to make like just something, especially with iOS devices and apps and games and stuff like that, like something that can hit really quickly, like draw something, mm -hmm. which is Pictionary. Mm -hmm. If you can do something like that with 3D animation or something like that, people are going to jump all over and try to be the next, the next huge thing, the yep. next people, the next thing people are doing for a solid month straight. Uh, Silent Ninja in the chat, he's uh, he says he signed up for the beta already, my brother. So uh, maybe you can give us a little bit of details on that as he goes for it. Uh, so go check that out. It's at Steam. Uh, I'm sorry, SourceFilms.net. Um, 
And uh, and let us know what you think if you're an animator, especially out there. Malengo, I'm looking at you. I think you still listen out there. Uh, so go check that out. On that note, guys, uh, go check out Chachi. He's walking away, so I'll let him plug. Insert coin to begin.com. And uh, Let's Play is coming up here a little bit live on the uh, on the on the broadcast here at live.sorgatronmedia.com. With Mad Mike. Yes. Um, I I have a blog, infin- uh, Crisis of Infinite Mikes. Uh, we've kind of been in the middle of a big update. We're working on a series right now called Potheads, where one of my friends has never seen Harry Potter before. So he's going to watch all the movies and ask me questions about it. So it's going to be an interesting experience. We also have uh, an article up there about um, New Yorkers' viewpoints on the Avengers movie. <laughs> It's always a different experience. Well, <laughs> he works across the street from where Stark Tower is. Okay. So he was a huge fan of that because, like, I wish this was the Marvel Universe because then I could see Stark Tower outside my window every day. Awesome. Go check that out. Frank Genoa at Fuzzwad on the Twitters. Yep. Still writing at insert coin to begin. Yes, also going to be Let's put up a review of Tropico 4 just in case you ever wanted to play Sim Cuba. <laughs> Sim Cuba. Sim Cuba. Seriously, that's wow. what it is. Do you get to attack Castro? Uh, you get to set Castro as your avatar. So, <laughs> that's fantastic. Take that for what it's worth. That He's is... your first choice. Second choice is Che Guevara. Of course. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Go check that out. And of course, guys, we are uh, at awesomecast.com. Uh, go follow us uh, at awesomecast on uh, Facebook, on the Google Hangouts. Uh, you can also drop us an email at contact at awesomecast.com. Well, I mean, let us know what you thought about stuff. Uh, people join us in the chat room like MW Sorg, Zero 2K, Riz IUP, Juggalo John, Hot Wheels, and more. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, and tag this show, uh, AC108, uh, hashtag AC108, uh, if you're talking about anything that relates to this show, commentary or otherwise. Uh, with that, thanks, Mike, Frank. And Chachi, uh, you've been our thanks to our awesome chat room. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. I've got a big iPod. (laughs) (laughs) He's talking about his penis. I did. (laughs) One last check for Rob. Ron. Rob. (laughs) Ron? Who's Ron? Dale. Wrong show. Wrong show. Wrong show. show. See that for later. (laughs) Remember, this is the non wrestling show. And this is the non cursing show. Yes. Yes. (laughs) Oh, crap. What did I just do? No, I'm good. (laughs) I'm good. You sure you're going to be able to do this? I was able to do it before. I can't remember. I can't. All right. And uh, switching is going to be weird since I have three hardware cameras in here. So uh, we'll uh, go with it.